All right, so today I'm gonna to share the top four programming languages that I think you should learn in 2020. Okay, so here's what I'll do. I'll go through four programming languages. And the first one will be the language that I think you should learn if you're a beginner. And the second one will be the language that I think is the most useful language to learn. The third one will be a language to learn if you're looking for a new challenge. And lastly, the fourth one will be the language of the future. And here are a few timestamps in case you wanna skip ahead to the one that's most interesting to you. Let's get straight into it with language number one, which is the language that I think you should learn as a beginner, which is Java. Java is such a staple and it's kind of like the breakfast of languages. It's the one that I always recommend that you start with. And when I got started, I didn't actually want to learn Java. I was kind of against it. It felt like Java was an old language and kind of outdated and I didn't even want to look in that direction. But that was just really stupid of me because today I realize how awesome Java actually is. Like I said, it's the perfect foundational language. Learning Java will set you up so well to be able to pick up other languages with ease. Plus there are tons of free resources available to learn from. And it has certain features like type safety that I think are really good to learn as a beginner. Java was also the first language that I like properly learned. And I did that by reading this book called Java Head First. And what I did was I committed to reading an hour per day for 30 days. And by the end of those 30 days, I was well equipped to start developing apps and learning new languages. So I really cannot recommend Java enough as a first language. Okay, now let's move on to the most useful language in my opinion, Python. Python is a fast language to write because the syntax is very scaled down. So you don't need to type as many characters to get the job done. It's what I would call a productivity language. And if you've seen any of my other videos on this channel, then you've probably noticed by now that I love to automate things using Python. It's really good for getting something simple up and running fast. It's a really fun language to work with for that reason. It's perfect for automating different tasks on the computer. Python is also commonly used in the field of AI. So there's tons of different libraries available for that, for things like deep learning and machine learning. So it's a super useful language and I really recommend it. Now let's move on to a language to learn if you're more intermediate and looking for a bit of a challenge. C++. This is a workhorse of a language and if you don't know this one already, then it's a great new challenge to get into. Uh, before I forget, today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free 1 gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year, plus $50 in free credits to use for other services that they offer. It's really easy to use and unlike many other big names in this industry, they have great always available technical support and their support people actually work there so it's not outsourced. And that's uh, really valuable to me, especially when I'm coding late at night and I get stuck on some issue, then I wanna be able to get in contact with support and just solve that problem as quickly as possible. Try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next projects. So go to Atlantic.net slash Cal and use the coupon code Cal with capital letters to get a $50 credit. Now it's also a bit of a dreaded language because when you're writing code in C++, you have to worry about memory allocation. And that's something that you don't really have to worry about with any of the previous languages that I've mentioned. And to be honest with you, I don't know C++. It's a language that's widely used in areas where speed and efficiency are highly valued. And if you learn this language, then you'll definitely be able to find a job. For instance, in interesting industries like AI or even at SpaceX as a top secret software engineer, whatever that means. Okay, so that one is a bit of a challenge, but now for the fourth recommendation, which is what I believe to be the language of the future. Dart. This is, in my opinion, the language of the future in terms of mobile app development. I'm probably biased because I love to develop apps in Flutter, as you may have noticed. 
but I genuinely believe that Dart and Flutter has the potential to take over a lot of app development in the future. Because it's simply way cheaper for a company to just hire one team of Dart engineers to work in Flutter instead of two teams, one for iOS and one for Android. But also, if you're thinking about starting your own company by building an app, it'll be way easier for you to get your app built and released because you only have to do the work of writing the app once. And I think that's where the biggest benefit lies in being able to create a quality app as a single individual and then release it to both iOS and Android, all from within the single code base. But I think one of the main fears with using a cross-platform framework cross-platform cross platform framework like Flutter and Dart is that you will have a slower app that will have a lesser user experience. But I've noticed no such compromises when using Flutter to develop apps. So for me, it's a no brainer. All right, so I actually wanna give you a fifth language that I would recommend if you want to get into web development and that is JavaScript. Okay, so to be honest, I don't really like JavaScript, which is why I tend to leave it out. But to be fair, JavaScript is a great language to learn. But if you're gonna learn JavaScript, I suggest learning HTML and CSS as well. Because without HTML and CSS, I do believe that JavaScript is really nothing special. However, these three in conjunction are, in my opinion, the best web development kit that you'll find right now. It's also pretty much the foundation of all websites that you see out there. So if you're looking to get into web development, then JavaScript is the clear winner. So that's one last one for you. And now these are just my recommendations. They're based on some research, but also my opinions in general. So just keep that in mind. And also if you're worrying about like what language to pick as your first one, then don't worry about that because it doesn't really matter. Just pick one that you're interested in and that you feel like learning because once you've learned one, you'll be able to pick up pretty much any other language without much effort. All right, that's it for this one. I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.